Oh, welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, first graders. Um, actually, parents, if you can stick around, the first part of this video is for you. Uh, so families, um, two things I want to share. First is if you click on that first link below, um, you'll see a link to a YouTube playlist um, of um, other lessons from Seattle Public Schools. Some some families have um, reached out to Mr. Mel and I saying that uh, they would like more YouTube videos. Um, and so if you would like more... Um, home learning opportunities besides this video, please click on that link below. It's that first link that will send you to more home learning lessons created by the Seattle Public Schools. Uh, there's some for math, for reading, uh, for um, physical education. Um, so click that playlist below and you can show those to your students. Um, the second thing is um, we started creating a rundown of what we're gonna learn in the video. Um, so that way, in case you want to practice more at home, you can see what skills uh, we did. So, um, students, welcome back. Parents, I'll run through this really quickly. Um, so guys, today for our lesson, we're going to be practicing with math. We're going to be practicing reviewing, counting to 120. We're going to uh, work with place value to 100. We're going to practice skip counting by twos, fives, and tens. We're going to complete uh, the number bond, so we'll have a number bond with the missing part. We're going to put in order double digit numbers from least to greatest or from greatest to least. And lastly, we're going to end with a challenge adding double digit numbers to 130. Then we're going to switch over to science. Today we're going to plant some seeds so that way we can observe them in future YouTube lessons. In writing, we're going to write a story about what you miss about school. And lastly, in reading, we're going to practice two new sight words, where and they. And then we're going to recount the important events in order of the story, Nuffle Bunny. So, without further ado, welcome to this week's lesson. Um, another thing I want to show you really quickly, um, here is um, the YouTube video that you're watching right now. That's me, of course. Um, and at some points today, I'm going to ask you to think, and uh, you might need to write things down. You might need time to think in your head or use your fingers. If you need time to think, which all of us do, the way you can stop me from talking is by pressing this button, this play button. If you press this button, it will turn from a play button to that pause button. And what that will do is that will stop me from talking and it will give you time to think. Yeah, there you go. You just got me to pause. Excellent. So without further ado, students, welcome back. Uh, I want to start today with a mood meter check-in to see how we're doing. I created a new um, poster for us to think about. So this would be a good time to hit that pause button to fill in this blank or to fill in these blanks. I'm feeling blank because blank. I'm feeling red because... I'm feeling blue because, I'm feeling really yellow because, or I'm feeling green because. So hit that pause button, freeze me, and start to think, fill in the sentence, I'm feeling blank because blank. Excellent, once you hit that, or once you filled out that sentence, um, you can hit that unpause button. Speaking of mood meter check-ins, I wanted to take a time, uh, a second. Mr. Mel and I had some um, pictures sent to us of students learning at home. I just wanted to share a couple of them really quickly to view, give you guys some ideas of what home learning could look like. So speaking of this, this is Aisha's um, mood meter check-in that she did at home. On this day, in fact, I know exactly what date it is, Thursday, April 7th, 2020. It says, I'm feeling yellow because, and it looks like maybe because she's feeling silly. Maybe she was feeling silly that day. Um, here's some pictures though of Aisha doing her math. She added 11 cookies and four cookies to get 15. This was the story problem from last week where I asked you to eat some snacks at home. Aisha started with nine pieces of broccoli. She ate some and now she only has six. How many pieces of broccoli did she eat? Hmm. She wrote nine minus three. She ate three of them to get to six. Here's another story problem. This was from the first lesson where she added some of her toys together. Wow. And of course, reading at home every day for 30 minutes is very important. We have Mark reading at home. 
And the other important thing is making sure you find ways to have fun at home. Mark and Austin like to have fun by drawing chalk on the sidewalk, making cool pictures. So as a reminder, thank you guys for sending those, those pictures. And as a reminder, friends, if you want to take pictures of what your home learning looks like, ask a family member to take a picture, and they can email to Mr. Mello and I, and we can sh uh, share it in future lessons if you would like. Um, anything else before we get started? Sorry, sorry. I feel like there was another thing. I'm sure I'll think of it. Oh, that's right. My YouTube subscribers. So I just checked. I'm at 24 subscribers. Wow, I'm famous. But I want to get to 30 subscribers. How many more do I need to get to 30? If I have 24 and I want to get to 30, hmm. Maybe you're using this. 24 and I'm going to get to 30. 24, 24. Six more, nice. I have 24 subscribers, but I have a friend who has 50 subscribers. I wonder how many more I need to get to 50 subscribers. If I have 24 and I want to get to 50, hit that pause button. Give yourself some time to think. Hmm. You're right. 24, we know that six more will get us to 30. One, two, three, four, five, six. From there, we need to add 10, 20. So we need to add 20 and the six that we start. So six and 20. What did 20 and six make? 20, six. Let me do that again. 20, 26, 26. You're right. So I need 26 more subscribers to get to 50. Wow. All right. Speaking of math, let's warm up our math brains. We're going to start counting from 20 all the way to 40. This is just a warm up. I know how you guys know how to do it, but it helps our brain just to sing those numbers again in order. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. Good job. Next one, I'm going to ask you to grab a number. I'm going to point to a number. I want you to grab it and add five more. So, for example, if I point to 23, you're going to go 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Ready? 54. Go. 54. 59. Good. Let's do 48. 48. Ooh, that was a trick one. 53. Let's go a little challenge. Let's challenge even more. Let's start with 79. 79. 84. Good. And last one. This one, we're gonna I'm gonna ask you to count 10. So grab a number and we're gonna add 10 more. Ready? Let's start with 97. Go. 97, 90. 97, 10 more gets you 107. Awesome. Now let's practice some place value. Ugh. So I want you to think this number has two tens and how many ones? One, one. Good. This number is three, two, one. 21. Good. Let's do this one over here. Ooh, excuse me. This number has six tens. Six tens and three ones. Ooh. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So six tens is 60, three, 60. Ready? Three, two, one. 63. Excellent. Um, another thing. Oops. Another thing we're going to do is practice skip counting by twos. Now, you might notice this 120 chart behind me has some certain colors that might give you some help when we're, count, when we're skip counting. So we're going to start by twos. Ready? We're going to count from two all the way to 30. Counting by twos. Ready? Go. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 
14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Now, let's count all the way to 100, counting by fives. Ready, go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Awesome. Now let's skip count by tens, going all the way to 120. 120. Ready? Start at 10. All the way to 120. I'm not even going to help you on this one. You're going to do it on your own. Ready? 3, 2, 1. Awesome job, my friends. You should be, you should practice skip counting in your head at home when you're washing your hands, maybe when you're getting ready for bed. Every time you practice skip counting, it just makes your brain that much stronger. And if you would like your own 120 chart, your family can pick them up when they come to school to get uh, your next homework packet. So look for that there. Um, oh, whoops, that's not ready. We're not ready for that yet. All right, next thing, we're gonna do some fill in the blanks with a number bond. Remember, a number bond is made up of two parts that come together to make the whole. So in this number bond, we have a part of two and a part of blank. Blank and two come together to make seven. Hmm, two and what makes seven? I know that when I put up seven fingers, I have two over here, and I have five, five and two come together and make seven. That's right. So let's see which ones you guys can do on your own. Ready? Yep, you got that one. Fact family. If two and five make seven, then five and two make seven. Good. Two and two come together and make four. Do that with your fingers. Two and two come together and make four. Awesome. Whoops, wrong way. Oh, best friends. You guys remember your best friends? Good. Four and six come together to make ten. Good. One and three make four. Oh, speaking of three. Hmm. Hmm. What is it? Good. Five and three come together to make eight. That You see that with your fingers, right? Five and three make eight. Awesome, let's do two more. Good, three and six make nine. Lastly, ooh, best friends. Awesome, good, three and seven make 10. Well done, all right. So for this week's math story problem, I'm going to ask you to think about who's living at home with you right now. And I want you to put them in order from the oldest person to the youngest person. Maybe the youngest person is you. Maybe it's a little brother or sister. Maybe it's a little pet. I don't know. Hmm. So who's the youngest person at home right now for you? Who's the oldest? So you gotta put them in order from oldest to youngest. So for example, let's say, let's say that you are seven years old. Maybe you have someone living at home that's 16. Maybe you have someone living at home that's, whoops, he's three years old. Maybe you have someone living at home that's 30 years old, something like this. And you gotta put them in order from greatest, the oldest person to the youngest. So in my example, who's the oldest person? What number is the greatest? Good, 30. So we'll put 30 first. 30, comma, cross out 30. Who's the next oldest person? Hmm. What is it? Six, good, 16. Cross out 16, put a comma. 
Who's the next oldest, the three-year-old or you, the seven-year-old? Good, seven-year-old and then the three-year-old. Now, I made up these numbers. This is probably not what your home looks like. So I want you right now to think who's at home and put them in order from the oldest, the greatest number, to the youngest number. If you need to pause me, you can pause me right now. Oh, I thought you paused me. And then, once you figure that out, then I got a challenge problem for you, which is you can make up any four people. You can make up, they're imaginary. They could be whatever age you want. So maybe they are, let's see, maybe they are 52 years old, 104 years old, maybe they're 27 years old, and maybe they're 63 years old. Something, something crazy like that. And then you can put those numbers in order from least smallest to greatest. So this could be your challenge problem. Make up four people and how old they are, and then put them in order from youngest all the way to the oldest, the greatest. Good luck. Um, that would be a great uh, that would be a great photo for your family to take of you. You can send it to Mr. Freiburg so I can see how old you made your people and how you put them in order. Speaking of math challenges, my friend Francie asked me if I could do super challenges in YouTube. So for this next part, these problems might be hard. They might feel just right, I don't know. But they might feel hard. If they're feeling hard, that's okay. These are just some super challenges. You can ask your family maybe to help you at home. Um, but we have some addition problems of double digit numbers all the way up to 130. Now this first one, I'm gonna help you. Let's read it together, ready? Three, two, one. 63 plus 21 equals blank. And you might be thinking, Mr. Freiburg, those numbers sound familiar. I feel like we already talked about 63 and 21. Good thinking, good memory. Ugh, let's go back to our greasy pan. And here we have the problem 63 plus 21. No, this is not 63. Oh, someone fell off. <sighs> there we go. Now we got it. 63 plus 21. Hmm. Now, you remember, the first thing we look at is are the ones. So let's take these tens away. Let's push these ones over here. All right, first thing we're gonna look at is the ones. Do we have more than 10 ones? Do we have more than 10 ones? No. Let's stop for a second. If we had more than 10 ones, let's say we had 11 ones, 11 of these. You remember we would take 10 of them away and turn them into a stick of 10, right? Because you're gonna to need to know that for the next couple problems. If you have more than 10 ones, you're gonna take them away and turn them into a stick of 10. But we don't have more than 10 ones, no. So how many ones do we have? Four, good. How many tens do we have? We have one 10, two tens, three tens, four tens, five tens, six tens, seven tens, eight tens. What are eight tens? Eight tens makes, right, 80. 80 and four make 84. Good. So let's say the sentence. 63 plus 21 equals 84. Nice. I'm assuming you guys don't have these tens and ones at home. So remember, you can always just draw a picture. You can always draw a picture with pen and paper. So if, let's do the next one then. 37 plus 45. Ooh, Francie, you wanted hard ones. All right, so 37, I'm gonna draw 37. How many tens are in 37? Good, three tens. One, two, three. How many ones? Seven, good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 45, how many tens? Good, four tens. 10, 20, 30, 40. How many ones? Five, one, two, three, four, five. All right, first let's count the ones. Seven. And five, what do seven and five make? 
Well, if you don't know, you can count them. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They make 12. Ooh, did you hear that though? 7, 8, 9, 10. As soon as you hear that 10, you got to stop and you turn them into what? Right, a stick of 10. So I'm going to take those 10 ones away. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't know if I actually got raised those, but 10. I'm going to turn them into a stick of 10. All right. Now how many ones do we have? Two. Good. We have two ones. How many tens do we have? One, two, three tens, four tens, five tens, six tens, seven tens, eight tens. Eight tens makes what again? Eighty. Say the whole sentence now. 37 plus 45 equals 82. Awesome. You guys are rocking. All right. The last two, I'm going to have you do them on your own. I'll have the answers down below in the description. So if you want to check your answers, they're down below. But first, you can try them at home. Try them on a piece of paper or maybe in your brain. I don't know how you guys do it. And then go down into the answers and see if you got it right. First one. This is where you're going to have to pause the video and try to try it in your head. Or you can write it down on your own. Your own uh, actually, I got a better idea. Uh, I have all this tape at home. I'm just going to tape this problem on the wall for you. So we got 85 plus 34. And... Woo, look at that one. That's a tricky one. 102. 102 plus 26. Now might be a good time to pause the video and write those down or try them in your head. All right. Well, thank you, Francie, for those challenge problems this week. You made my brain really tired, but that just means I got stronger, so that's great. Moving in now to something I'm really excited about, science. Whew. Now, this year in science, we did we studied weather. I know last week I asked you guys to go outside and think about what's the weather. We've studied balls and ramps in the winter. That was fun. In the spring, though, we're going to study, or we're going to use plants to help us study organisms or living things. And you'll see I have four cups filled with you're right, dirt or soil. And on top of these cups, I have bags of seeds. Now, I'm not going to use all of these seeds. I'm only going to take out two for each one. But what we're going to do today, I'm going to have to lower the camera. What we're going to do today is we're going to put a, uh, two seeds in each cup. And then I'm going to put them by the window. And I'm going to spray them with water. And we're going to let them have some time and see what happens. And then next week, uh, we're gonna come back and see if has anything changed. And then we'll come back in two weeks and see if anything's changed and come back the next week, see if anything's changed. So your job as a scientist for the next month or so is to keep observing these cups and to see what's changing. If that didn't make, if that did not make a lot of sense, don't worry, I'll explain it again next week. All you have to do today is just watch Mr. Freiberg put two seeds in each cup. Now I'm going to push the seeds down because they want to be, they don't want to be on the top of the soil or top of the dirt. They want to be further down. That's where they like to live. So I put two seeds, those are called pumpkin seeds. I put two pumpkin seeds in this cup. In the next cup, we're going to put two, yeah, pea seeds. Pea seeds. Let's see. Oof. I'm gonna go down, down, down. Push it down. Over here, we're gonna go down, down, down. Awesome. So those are two pea seeds. And then over here, the next one, what does that say? Good. Corn seeds. We're gonna put two corn seeds in. Push it down, down, down. Over here, push it down, down, down. All right. And then lastly, ooh, that's a tricky word. 
I see the word, if I cover up the N-E-Y, I see the word, what is that word? Good, kidney, kidney bean seeds. Interesting. All right, push that kidney bean seed all as down as it can go. Push it down as far as it can go. Or not, that's not true, not as far as it can go, but push it down enough. All right. And then the last thing I'm going to do today, get the spray bottle. Inside the spray bottle is water. We're just going to give it a couple squirts. First, got to turn it on. Whoa, that's a little too harsh. Let's see. There we go. The reason we're putting water in here is because the seeds like the water. The seeds need the water to get bigger and bigger. Connection is kind of like how you guys need food, and even Mr. Freiburg needs food. So I can keep growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger. And that way we have energy to get work done. So that's all for science this week. But I promise you, it's going to get more and more exciting as we come back in future weeks to look at how that has changed. All right. We've already had 26 minutes of YouTube videos. That's a lot this week. And we still have a couple more things. We're going to go through it pretty quickly for writing this week. And if you don't have paper and pencil at home, please ask your family to come to school because um, we are passing out paper and pencils at school. So if you need more paper and pencils, you can find them at school. I want you, and Ms. DeMello wants you to write a story this week using this sentence. This sentence, read it with me. Ready? Three, two, one. I miss school because blank. What is it that you miss school? What, or what about school do you miss? Do you miss math, like Mr. Freiburg? Do you miss science? Do you miss just seeing your friends? Do you miss going to lunch? Do you miss Friendship Friday? What do you miss about recess? Do you miss your teacher? Do you miss Mr. Saeed? Who is it? What is it that you miss about school? Now, I'm going to challenge you to write at least three things that you miss. Some of you I know are going to be like, Mr. Freiburg, can I write 10 things that I miss? Of course. But I want you to at least, I want everyone to try at least three things. What are three things or three people that you miss at school? So that's what you're going to be writing this week. So now's a good time to pause the video and write this down. I miss school because, and fill out the sentence. I miss school because I miss seeing you guys every day. I miss seeing Mr. Mello and my other teacher friends every day. And I miss school because I love PE. I miss Mr. George and going to PE. All right, the last part of our video. You guys are almost there. You guys are doing great. New sight words this week. They might not be new, but we'll call them new. This one's a very important question or word. This word you see in a lot of questions where you're asking, to, you're looking for something, you're trying to find something. You would use the word where. Where did I put my scissors? Where's my backpack? Oh, I don't, I can't find my jacket. I wonder where I put it. Where? Let's basketball together. Ready? Three, two, one. W H E R E. Where? Yes. Did you make it? Good. Where? W H E R E. If you have a paper and pencil home, you should write this down at least three times. Next sight word, last sight word for this week. It looks like the word the but it sounds different. The E-Y turns into an A sound. A, F, A, they. You're talking about other people. Maybe you're talking about your three best friends. And you say, they are my friends. Maybe, um, I don't know. They like the color pink. They like the color silver. They like the cover, they like to eat cake. They. Write this word down three times. Ready? Oh, sorry. Sorry. First, let's basketball. Ready? T H E Y. They. Yes. Awesome job, friends. All right. Woof. This has been a long YouTube video. We're now at the 30 minute mark. You guys are doing great. We're almost done. It's almost time for a body break. I do want to read a book really quickly a book that you guys love, Nuffle Bunny. And as you listen to the book today, I want you to just enjoy the book. Just enjoy it. It's a funny book. It's a lot of fun. It makes me laugh. But at the end, I'm going to ask you to think on your own and tell someone at home what happened in this book. 
And when I ask you what happens, you don't need to tell me every single thing. Just tell me the important things. And you have to put them in order. First, blah, 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 blah. Then, blah, 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 blah. Next, blah, 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 blah. And at the end, blah, 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 whatever. Got it? That's your homework this week. Nuffle Bunny by one of our favorite illustrators and authors, Mo Willems. Awesome. I'm going to try my best to read this book while showing you the illustrations. We'll see how that goes. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with this book. You'll see that right off the bat, the, uh, the illustrator Mo Williams is giving you a clue as to what's going to happen to Nuffle Bunny in this book. Nuffle Bunny. Actually, let's go this way. Let's try this. We'll see if it works. Uh, let's see. It's asking me to read backwards. All right. Not so long ago, before she could even speak words, Trixie went on an errand with her daddy. Remember, errand means she went to go do something. Maybe go to go to the grocery store, maybe go buy something, maybe go to the laundromat and do laundry. Trixie and her daddy went down the block, through the park, past the school, and into the laundromat. Remember, laundromat is a place where you where you can take your laundry, your dirty clothes, and make them clean. Put them through the washer and the dryer. Trixie helped her daddy put the laundry into the machine. You can see how silly she's being. She even got to put the money into the machine. I wonder what coin that is. Then they left. And you can see again who's inside the washing machine. But a block away, oh, blah, but a block or so later, Trixie realized. That means Trixie remembered something or realized something. Trixie turned to her daddy and said, I will fly, I will wobble. That's right, replied her daddy. We're going home. Agle, flaggle, kablaggle, said Trixie again. Blaggle, plabble, lumpy, flappy, snurp. Now, please don't get fussy, said her daddy. Well, she had no choice. Trixie bawled. Wah! She went boneless. Boneless meaning she kind of like threw her body to the ground. She acted like she didn't have any hard bones inside of her. She did everything she could to show how unhappy she was. By the time they got home, her daddy was unhappy too. As soon as Trixie's mommy opened the door, she asked, Where's Nuffle Bunny? Hmm. The whole family ran down the block, and they ran through the park. They zoomed past the school and into the laundromat. Trixie's daddy looked for Nuffle Bunny and looked and looked. But Nuffle Bunny was nowhere to be found. So Trixie's daddy decided to look harder. Nuffle Bunny! And those were the first words Trixie ever said. So, we had to read through that book a little quicker than I wanted, but your homework, remember, is to think what happened in the beginning of the story, 
what happened in the middle of the story, and then what happened at the end of the story. I want you to tell a family member at home. Also, I just thought of another challenge. If you would like to really challenge your brain, you can go back, skip back in the YouTube video to where I started reading the book, and click the mute button. It makes me not talk out loud, it makes me quiet, and you can actually go back. So when I was reading the book, you could go back and try to read the book without Mr. Freiburg's help. That's an idea. Anyway, friends, thanks for hanging in there with me. That was a long 35 minutes. Now it's time for a body break. As you're doing a body break, though, I want you to sing happy birthday to three of our friends. And I forgot to write them down, so I'm going to remember. I'm going to look up my text. Okay, where is Mr. Mello? Okay, so, blah, 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 blah. So Mia had a birthday. Did Wait, is that I read that right? Oh, yo, 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 yo. I want to get this right, so give me a second. Let's see. Yeah, so Mia had a birthday early this month. Happy belated birthday to Mia. Remember, belated means her birthday already passed. But since we didn't get to see her at school, we can sing her happy birthday. So happy birthday, uh, Mia. Happy birthday, Nizam. And happy birthday, belated birthday to Yusuf. So make sure you sing happy birthday to Mia, Nizam, and Yusuf as you do your body break. Friends, it was great seeing you. I will see you next week. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. Cover those coughs. Wash those hands for 20 seconds. And be safe. Miss you guys.